Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessing and honor and glory and power belong to you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are awesome. Thank you, Father. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. Father, we we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you thanks. How blessed are we to worship the one and only true God, that we know the truth, that your Holy Spirit has revealed to us, that you are Lord of all, that you are King of kings, that you are the Alpha and the Omega, that you are the Creator, that there was no one before you, that you, you are, you just are, you are everything. Father, I thank you that thank you. you have given us the ability to praise you, to worship you, and to honor you. I thank you that you are always with us, that as we were singing that you are with us, you go before us, you're behind us, you're all around us, you never leave us. I thank you that your blessing is upon us, that it never, ever leaves us. I thank you that we worship you, and I thank you that all around the world there are people in unity worshiping you, and that your blessing is upon every single person that puts their trust in your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that today we are free, you, that we have freedom, not only in the natural, but we have freedom in our hearts, freedom in our minds, freedom in our emotions, freedom in our souls, that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We thank you that you have done everything, everything needed to free us, to bless us, you, to make us able to receive your promises. And I thank you that you are here in this place today, yes. that you are inside of us, that you're all around us, and that you take pleasure, that you take joy in seeing your children worshiping you, not because of anything apart from the fact that we love you, that we love you, and we just want you to know that we love you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Guys, you can take your seats. Um, do you know, I was just thinking, just because we've just returned from Uganda, those of you that know, which I'm sure all of you know, we returned on Friday. And I was just thinking to myself this time last week, we were in a church in Africa, worshipping the same God. The same God. Not a different God, not the African God, not the God of that continent, but the same God. Do you know, all over the world there are people, our brothers and sisters, worshipping the same God, the only God. It's crazy, you know, to think that it's going on everywhere, that he's revealed himself to so many. Well, he's revealed himself to everyone. It's just for us to see, isn't it? But it's just amazing to think that you can be anywhere, anywhere in the world, and you can still worship your God. It's amazing. It's awesome. Um, so anyway, I just want to welcome everybody. There's a few faces that I haven't seen before. Um, so welcome today. I think... We, we do have some gifts for new people, but I'm looking around and I'm thinking, unless our gifts have um, multiplied in that basket, we may not have enough. <laughs> but we shall see. Um, but if we haven't, come back next week and we will have a gift for you then. Um, but yeah, as I already said, myself and Andrew and a friend of ours, Carl, who lives in Germany, we returned from Uganda on Friday. So in a little while, we're going to share with you testimony. We're going to share videos, photos, and we're just going to tell you what took place because we know you guys sowed into us either financially, by prayer. You know, you guys may not have gone with us, but you went with us. Do you know what I mean? So we want to, we want to show you what took place, the power of God, because do you know what? God is awesome. It's so humbling to stand in front of people in a, a different country. I mean, we stood in front of leaders and pastors and bishops, like 85 at one point, and I'm standing there and I'm thinking, what am I doing here? Do you know what I mean? What, what is Selena from Warsaw standing here in front of this massive group of leaders, pastors, bishops who are influencing towns and cities? What am I doing here? I'm like, God, you're so funny. Do you know what I mean? He, he, he uses... People that are faithful, people that are available, people that are willing to go. He uses everybody. 
So he's got no favorites. One of the things we were trying to get through to people in Uganda was God has got no favorites. There is no super duper. Do you know what I mean? The same power that is in the bishop is the same power that is in you. Do you know what I mean? We, it, it just, but still, saying that, it still baffles me when I'm standing there and I'm like, God, what am I doing here? Do you know what I mean? You speak, I know it's you speaking through me, but still, you know, sometimes your mind doesn't comprehend what God can do when you allow him. It was amazing. So we're going to share all about that. But before we do, I just want to tell you a couple of things so you're aware that they're coming up. So this Wednesday, we have Bible study as usual. This time, it is going to be in the building. We did just do a Zoom one last week, but we are back in the building from this Wednesday, 7 o'clock. Um, we have a team who are going to be with us on the 14th of May. So on our Sunday service on the 14th of May, we will have a, an American team from a Bible college in Texas. And they're coming in connection with European Initiative. So we're hosting them from Saturday through to Tuesday. So they will be with us for outreach in Warsaw, I think, on Saturday night, then Birmingham on Sunday. Then we're taking them to Liverpool for two days to do some evangelism and some outreach. But they will be here during the Sunday service. They'll be sharing with us. So that'll be really exciting. I'd encourage you to come. It's going to be great. And then we also have um, a man called Jonathan Comrath, who will be joining us on the, get the dates right, 12th of July. So this is in July. So it's a little way away, but I just want to make you aware of it. So he's going to be with us on the 12th of July to the 16th of July. Now, he heads a ministry called Mission 24. Mission 24. Um, he's an evangelist, and he's been an evangelist for a long time. He's been in ministry for a long time. But what he's very, very, very good at is teaching people evangelism. Teaching people, not, not just the how to do it, because it's more than how to practically do it, but teaching people what to say, do you know what I mean? It, it just, he really fires you up, put it this way. We went and spent, myself and Andrew and two others, Louise and one other, um, just an afternoon listening to his team. And even though we do evangelism and, you know, we, we've been out there on the streets and that, it really just, it's like it, it sets you on fire again because you're hearing the same truth because truth never changes, but you're hearing the same truth in a different way. And it really kind of opens your eyes to different ways of doing things. They're going to be with us from the 12th of July to the 16th of July. Now, this is an event that's going to run on Eventbrite. That's the right name, yes? So it is actually going to be a paid event. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you can register, and there is a fee to it. I don't, I'm not going to tell you now because I can't remember off the top of my head exactly how much it is but it will be advertised well in time. Um, it, the fee is not very much, and I would recommend it 100%. The money's not going towards us. It's going to Mission 24, so we're not getting anything financial out of it, but I'm recommending it to you guys because it was amazing when we went, and we've met with this guy a few times just personally as well, and he's a really, really nice guy. Um, they're going to be with us in the days and the evenings, so if you can't come in the day, you can come in the evening, whichever is suitable. And then on Saturday, there'll be an outreach. Saturday won't have a cost to it, but Saturday there'll be an outreach in Warsaw Town Centre, followed by um, a service on Saturday night. And then they will be with us for the Sunday service as well on the 16th of July, which leads very lovely into our next mission trip, which is to Spain the day after. So the 17th of July. <laughs> so those of you that have already put your names down and booked your flights to come to Spain, we're going on the 17th of July. If anybody else is still interested, please just come and see us and we'll let you know what's involved. But this is the day after, straight after we have this training. So those of you that have put your names down to go to Spain, we're, we're going to be on fire after this train. It's going to be awesome. Um, but I'm only telling you these things to just put them in your, you know, to just plant a seed in your, in your mind and your heart because... You, you may forget everything I've told you or one of them may come back to you and you might think, you know what, I want to find out more about that. So please just come and ask. Um, I think that's all the notices I want to give you, apart from the fact that we will take an offering, but it'll be right at the end during our last worship song. So now what I'm going to do before we share our feedback from Uganda, I'm going to ask Javier to come up, who's going to lead us in communion. We're going to take communion, but he's going to, he's going to speak to us first. So Javier... Hello, everyone. Hello. It's good to see you. You look even better than last week. <laughs> it's my privilege to share with you the, this communion talk. 
I prepared this talk uh, last year, I believe, but the word of God is still relevant. doesn't matter how the time passes. Amen. So I'm going to share with you about some of the verses and scriptures in the Bible that shows us that uh, Jesus chose to love us. He chose to sacrifice himself for us. He wasn't murdered. He wasn't uh, taken against his own will, but he decided to go to the cross to have a relationship with you and I. Amen. How beautiful is that? So the purpose of my talk is to point you to Jesus. It's not to make you laugh. It's not to make you feel good about yourself. It's not to... <laughs> Those two things might happen as well, but my main purpose is to point you to Jesus. Hallelujah. So uh, as I prepared this talk, I was thinking when I watched for first time the movie of The Passion. I was a teenager in those days. I went to the cinema with my cousins, my mom. Um, it was hard to see that movie because it reflects uh, very uh, graphically uh, what sufferings Jesus went through. Um, it's not an easy one to see. I don't know how many of you watched it. But at some point I had to close my eyes and say, enough, I don't want to see more. And one question that it raised inside of me was, uh, was this really needed? Uh, was this, uh, how, to, how to express this, I was, was really a need for him to go through all of that? Why? Why did that have to happen to him? Why it was so bad that they spat on his face, they whip his back, and all of, that, all of that humiliation that he went through, physically, emotionally. I was so uh, moved by that movie. And I'm going to share the first scripture is John 10, 17 and 18. By the way, I, I will answer that question later on. If it was why it is necessary, uh, it says in John 10:17 to 18. Therefore, doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, by but I lay I laid it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. So it's amazing that. Jesus could have chosen to, to step out of his calling, to not obey his father, and still be loved by the father. We see in John 18, 4 to 6, it says, Jesus therefore, this is John 18, verses 4 to 6, Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. This is the context of this scripture is when they went to the Mount of Gethsemane and they were looking for him, the soldiers, the Roman soldiers. So they are asking for him. And he answers to them, I am he. As soon then as he said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. So this shows us how the power of Jesus uh, uh, was manifested in, in there and how he easily could have protected himself from going to the cross, but he still chose to love you and go through all of that pain to have a relationship with you. How amazing is that? Amen. It says as well, in, I don't know what the scripture is this. I think it's, it's Matthew, Matthew 26, 52. It says, uh, this is in the context of Peter when he cuts, chopped the ear of one of the, the guards that was there. Thank you, uh, Andrew. And it says in 52, put your sword back, talking Jesus to Peter. In its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 leg legions of angels? So this scripture shows us as well how he could be resourced to, to fight against those soldiers and be free from that. But he still chose to love you and love me and go through all of that. Um, thank you, Jesus, for your obedience and for going all the way through. Thank you, Jesus. We are the fruit of that obedience today here. Hallelujah. Uh, another scripture, this is talking about how he remained quiet how he was silent before those false witnesses 
that were accuse, accusing him falsely. This is in Matthew 26, 60 to 62. It says, but they didn't find any uh, argument against him, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? So Jesus had uh, different opportunities to speak and to defend himself again, but he didn't use those opportunities. He remained silent. It says in Matthew 27, 13, 14, then Pilate, is how you call it? Pilate. Pilate, thank you, asked him, don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. So this was something unusual, finding someone who was not trying to protect their, their own lives. This was something that to the governor was amazing, to see that someone was not replying against those accusations. And this was to fulfill the prophecy in Isaiah 53, 7, that says, he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Right there, there is a, a prophecy fulfilled in Jesus. He was laid, led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In verse 11, it says, after he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous, my righteous servant will justify many. How many are we here today? Amen. And he will bear their iniquities. So in answer to my question that I made myself, was it necessary? Yes, it was necessary for him to suffer all of that because we had that sinful nature that had to be dealt with. There was a, pay, a price to pay for that sin that we were carrying. It says in Romans 5:19, so many scriptures. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, talking about Adam. So also by one man's obedience, praise God, many will be made righteous. First Peter 3:18, it says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, just once, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. So I, I took you in this journey just to make you think about how important you are to God. And as we are going to partake of the, the bread and the wine and the juice, we are remembering Jesus. We are remembering that he chose us. We are remembering his love. And why do we have bread and juice? Why don't we have cake or sandwiches? It was because what Jesus did in the, in the Bible and showed us and taught us to do. And what the bread represents is the flesh. And at the same time, it's a symbol of the man's wealth. I want you to listen to this carefully, please. The bread is a symbol of a man's wealth a man's possessions, all that the person have. So when Jesus was breaking that bread and sharing it with his disciples, it was as he was saying to them, everything I have, it, I have, it is at your disposal. All of mine, it is yours. That's what he meant when he was sharing the bread with his disciples. And we can partake of the bread thinking, Everything that he is sharing with us t today, his love, his forgiveness, his wealth. So thank you, Javier. Thank you, Javier. Uh, I'm just going to pray, and then we can just take our elements. So, Father, we thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus. We thank you for the, the broken body. That was to heal us, Father God, of all our, in, our ailments, our, uh, our mind, our emotions, Father God. That we are now complete in you because of your broken body, Father. We praise you and we honour you for that. For the wine, Father, that we're going to drink right now, the juice. 
that represents your blood. Amen. So we, if the, the young people, the children, because we may, we may all identify as young people, if the children would like to go and do some arts and crafts in the other room, they're more than welcome to go now. Um, otherwise, they can stay as well if they'd like to. So, Javier, do we have our video ready? So what we're going to do now is we are going to give you feedback from our time in Uganda. Um, the reason why we're standing down here is because we have a lot of photos that we want to show to you, and we're going to explain some of them and give you the testimony behind them. And if we stand up there, you won't see as well. So we're standing down here. Um, that, first vid that first photo that you see in there, so I'm sure you can spot me and Andrew. Um, the guy standing behind us is Carl, our friend from Germany. So he's done a lot of mission trips with us. His name's Carl Schuler. Um, he's a very nice gentleman. So we were the team that went, just three of us, and everybody else that you see are friends that we have in Uganda. So you will see, we've got two, two small videos from them to play. The first one we're going to play in a moment, and it's by the guy on the, your left here, David. And he has a ministry in Uganda called Friends of Jesus. And what they do is they do discipleship. So the really awesome thing is that when we go out there and we, we do, sorry, the little baby was getting excited, um, and we do evangelism, we do outreach, we go to the churches, these guys have a team of people that are discipling people. So they're actually going into towns and villages and cities, cities and they're setting up discipleship groups where they go and they teach people foundations of Christianity. They teach them who they are in Christ. So it's awesome that God connected us because for us to just go there, people get saved or get revelation and then they're like, now what? But now we can connect them to these guys. So everybody on that photo, apart from me, Andrew and Carl, and two other guys is part of that Friends of Jesus ministry. They all do the discipleship. Now there's two guys on there who... Um, you, you will see a video they've recorded for us right at the end. We saved it for the end. Because they're, do you know what? They're absolutely amazing gentlemen. One of them's named Godfrey and one of them's named John. Um, I've known both of them since 2019. And Godfrey is the host. He's the guy that puts it all together. He connects everything, makes it all work. Um, and John, he goes everywhere with us. He translates, he speaks um, different Ugandan languages, dialects, because he says that most people think they all speak one language and they don't. Every village speaks a different language, um, and he knows nearly all of them, so he travels with us everywhere. And they are such amazing people. They are absolutely awesome. And when you watch the video, you'll, you, you'll just be able to tell from watching them how much fun we had in Uganda. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to play a video. Like I said, it's the guy, David, the Friends of Jesus Ministry, the founder. His video is about seven minutes long, but it's kind of an overview of the trip because we didn't want you to just hear it from us. We wanted you to hear it from them as well. Um, so we're going to play that first and then we're going to go through some photos and we're both going to share whatever comes back to us in the moment, you know, whatever God wants us to share with you guys about what took place out there. So Javier, if you just want to keep, get that running so it then plays the video. Here we go. Praise the Lord with us. This is David Mazzini, friends of Jesus Ministry. It's always beautiful uh, sharing good news. And this time I'm sharing good news concerning the recent trip taken by Jesus uh, this, this, this month in April. We had a good time right from after the, uh, Resurrection Weekend. And we had an awesome marathon in 11 or so days with them. See, the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 14, the Bible says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings 
of good things. Hallelujah. And so it was with the reboot team. They, they bring glad tidings, good news. Praise the Lord. And we had many places went to. We went to, to Living Hope, which is a, is a shelter for young girls, vulnerable girls. And, and it was an awesome time to share with the children as well as to share the love of Christ with them and, and also to pray with them and, 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 and encourage them and give them hope. It was just a beautiful time. And after that, we had two days, two days in Luero, a place called Luero is, is about uh, maybe 80 kilometers out of Kampala city. And we had two days there and two activities, one with the pastors, leaders, church leaders, which was a conference, and then we'd also have crusades. That area where the crusades and where this was taking place is predominantly Muslim. And we saw the work of God being done and many coming, giving their lives to Jesus. And the, the pastors, the pastors are hungry, hungry for more. And indeed they wanted us to go for more days. And I thank those of you that because the scripture I've just read says that how shall they accept their sin? Because you may not have come physically to Uganda, but you sent the team that came and they, they indeed were bearing fruit and bring out the, and demonstrating the love of God. Because again, in First John, the Bible says, First John, I believe it's 3.18, it says, let us love not in, in, in speech, but rather we should love in deed and in truth. And this is what we have been saying with the Reboot team. We also went, uh, after that, went to Kazo. Kazo is about 300 kilometers out of Kampala in the, in the, to the west. And there we had uh, pastors meetings. We, we had again pastors meetings, three days conference. And the pastors were hearing things they've never had, yet they've been pastoring. Again, it's beautiful when you see people's lights coming on in people's lives literally and lives being transformed before your eyes. So we believe that their ministries can't remain the same and indeed we shall continue even uh, discipling them as a ministry and we thank Reboot for, for the introduction and, and the demonstration and, in, uh, and bring the good news and, and the light of the gospel to this group of ministers. The Bible also in Matthew, in Matthew chapter 25, I will read from verse 34. These are the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. From verse 34, he says, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in? O oh, naked and clothed you. Oh, when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. And again, this is, this, I, I love relating every activity in scripture because it is the word. Everything we do is scripture. It is in the word. It is in the word. In Kazo, we went. We went to an orphanage, Hope orphanage, in, in, which which had uh, many girls. Some some residents. Some are in boarding school. But again, we shared with them the love of God. We sang and danced with them there. It was an awesome time that we had with the girls. We also went to visit Kazo Central Police Station, and the inmates who were there that they all gave their lives to Christ. And also shared with them something to eat and, 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 and uh, Bibles. And in fact, when we went back the next day, some of them had even been released. We give thanks to God. We also went to Chiruhura prisons. It's a national prison in the district. And, and again, 
uh, we shared the gospel with them. Many gave their lives to Christ and many were healed from diseases. We give thanks because this is what the scripture is saying. Praise the Lord. So this reboot helped uh, also in these activities. These are the activities we engaged in, some of the activities we engaged in. Um, uh, and, and, and we know that as they continue coming, as Reboot co continues coming, and as you who, who have shared or who have sent them by reason of either your partnership or your prayers, that you, we are all partakers of the same grace and that the love of God is being demonstrated in this time. The Bible says we're in a time indeed where evil is called good and good is called evil, but I think that there is a remnant. We are a remnant that God has chosen for this time ministers who are in and out of season to be able to go out of their comfort zone and come down here and share the love of Christ and take the gospel deep and far where it is needed and where people have not even experienced Jesus. I would like to thank everyone, all the partners of Reboot, all you at Reboot and all the ministers, uh, uh, Pastor Andrew and Selina and also Carl, the evangelist Carl, who came down here. I thank all of you and may God continue blessing you. Indeed, blessing, he shall bless you, multiplying, he shall multiply you, and may you and may he cause all grace to abound to you, that you having all sufficiency in all things, may I continue abounding to good works. You are so blessed and you are all a blessing. I thank you and we love you. Shalom. Javier, if you could just if you could just pause it there for a moment. Um, so, like I said, that was one of our friends, David. Um, I hope you were able to follow what he was saying. But we are going to tell you about a lot of the things he mentioned because we're going to go through um, some photos with you. But he's a he's a, a really great man, isn't he? We we met him last year, and um, definitely God connects you with people from a different part of the world. You know, hundreds of thousands of miles away. But then you see why, and it's just like wow. Now, who would have thought years and years ago that you would be connected with somebody from just what would seem such a random area that you would never, ever imagine? And God just connects you, and that's it. Done. So it's awesome, wasn't it? Do you want to... You're going to have to come over here, Andrew. Otherwise, the people watching on live stream will not see you. Do you know, what, what comes to my mind when I, when I look at that is Ephesians 2.10. It says that we're God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works that he has already before ordained that we should walk into them. And you know, a lot of the meetings out there, again, it's all God orientated, God um, organised. Um, and as this goes on, I'm going to tell you a, a, a bit of a, a connection we made with a guy called David, who was our chef. Not that David. Not that David, another guy, David. Um, so when we got there last year, they kept on saying, the kef, the kef is coming, the kef is coming. <laughs> and we were like thinking, what's a kef? And he says, you know, the guy that makes the food for you. <laughs> Bless them. <laughs> so they were talking about the chef, but they, they, they said the chef. Anyway, but we, no, we call him the chef, no, and him they, him call him the chef. they call him the chef. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we met him last year, and he was going through Caris um, and had stopped, so he hadn't finished. And so we organised it so he could continue on with his studies. So that, that is you guys, by the way, yeah, yeah, not yeah. me and Andrew. Reboot as a ministry, sponsored we, we sponsored him to put him through Karius in Uganda. Yeah, yeah. And so he's, he's doing that at the moment. But he brought to our, um, our knowledge that he's, he, he got an inheritance um, of some finances a few years ago. Anyway, he bought some land, and for the last five years, the land has not been touched. Um, and so we had a bit of a conversation with him and stuff. And it, I'm, I'm saying this to you just because it's a God thing. Uh, and now they're talking about, we are talking about, uh, raising finances to actually build a property on that land and to use it as a, a ministry home for travelling people that go in and out of, of Uganda. And so there will be a base for us um, as we continue to do what we're doing out there. So God is working. Amen. Amen. So, um, normally we have this, this amazing video, don't we, guys? We've like, you know, little day one, day two, Kampala, baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
Well, we didn't have time. Um, so this time, this time we have a video with no writing and no anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask Javier in a moment to just start showing some of the photos. And we're going to get him to stop at certain points. And we're going to talk to you. We're going to tell you the testimony behind the photo, where that was and what happened. Um, so Javier, if you just want to press play, and then I'll tell you when to stop. So this is the, the children's home that he spoke about, Living Hope. Yeah. And most of these children were taken off the street, so these, these guys go around in their car and they find the children just walking around. Some of them have no clothes on, some of them... Do you want to pause there? Like every word you say has a, a connotation in the brain, whereas in other countries they're just so innocent. And sometimes we, we didn't say anything because we were, we were, it was a bit humbling, like, you know what? Look at us thinking we know the right way to do it and we know what's, that's, that's this name and that's that name. And we're like, well, actually, no, we're in their country. And, you know, what, they, what they're saying is how it is. And it, but it is, it, is to, it is quite not funny in not a ha-ha funny way, do you know what I mean? But in a, like a, I don't know the word to use, but it makes you smile. It makes you smile because it's so innocent and so pure. George. George Muller. Anybody know George Muller? Yeah. Okay. So George Muller opened um, an orphanage over here. In, I think it was in Bristol. I think it was in Bristol, yeah. Uh, for 2,000 children. And he never asked anybody for money. And every day he prayed there would be a knock at the door and people would give him food, give him finances, that kind of stuff, yeah? That woman on, on the end there... Natalie. Exactly the same. She asked for no money from anybody. But every day somebody comes to her and gives her finances and gives her food for the children. Absolutely crazy. It's just awesome how she's living. Right, I mean, we speak about faith, don't we, you know, the, the righteous will walk by faith. There's a woman who's living out that walk right now. She has no money coming in, there's no government help, but all of those children are being supported. And the house behind her was, uh, was up for a certain amount of money. She called the, the, uh, the landlord and just spoke to him and she got it reduced by three quarters. Oh, wow. I mean, it's just unheard of in that country. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Um, and all of the children that are being sponsored and looked after by her, and a, a, two, a team of two other people, three other people, um, just by faith. Yeah. Just awesome. She's um, very young looking. She wouldn't tell us her age. <laughs> uh, looks very young. She's over 18 because uh, she graduated from Caris. So she's been to Caris in Uganda as well. So she's got a very good foundation. But the, the children, like, they all have their own story. And we didn't have time to hear all of them. But she told us about um, two young, I think two young girls that had come to them very recently. And what had happened was that one um, has got physical disabilities. You might have noticed her in one of the pictures. And then a sister. Um, and their mom, like, the pressure of looking after them because of the girl with disabilities, she actually committed suicide. And because she committed suicide, the people in the village, they weren't willing to take on the responsibility of the, the young girl with disabilities. So I can't remember how she said she heard about them, but she literally just found out about them. There's, sometimes they might go into ghettos and slums and just find children. But actually, I think somebody got in touch with her because she does have, um, I think it's an NGO. They call it an NGO, I think. So she does have like a, an official charity set up. But... It is sometimes just word of mouth, or they just find children. And what they do is they go and find out if there is anybody in the community, any family, willing to look after them. And if there's not, then they take, their parents have no income or they're struggling. So they take things to them and help them to stay at home as well. But we, we were able to spend time with them and pray for them. And um, we, we gave the children a football. And honestly, you've never seen some kids move so fast in all your life. We like just threw it. They were sitting down. We just threw it and they were all like, wow. So, oh, OK. But um, it was, was awesome. And then if you just continue with a, a few more photos, Javier. So that, those photos you see in there were the same day. It looks like a very posh house, doesn't it? Um, it was a nice house. We went to this lady, Tasha. Her name's Tasha. And they just do... Um, you can stop there, Javier. We just do... They just do, sorry, an evening fellowship. Um, 
Well, they put it out over live stream. So they've got, do you know what? They're, I don't know what's going on, but their live stream works better than ours. Um, I'm not sure what technology they're using, but I think we need some. Um, <laughs> but they come together every Tuesday night and they just share the word and share fellowship together. So that was what we took part in there. Um, and then if you continue with the photos, do you want to tell them about? The next one is a, is a pastor's meeting. So that's, that's the same age. The next one's a pastor's meeting we went to. Um, in the bush. So if you stop it there, if you, look, if you notice, there's no roof on that building. There's a tin roof? At the, at the front of it, but not the back. Oh. There's, there's nothing. So there's no doors on it, there's no windows, there's just holes. Uh, and you can see the children at the side there. And this guy walking towards us is the pastor of that fellowship. So if you go to the next picture, have you please? So this is inside. They've got like some curtains and sort of back on the back wall. You can play a few more. I think there's a few of this place. Yeah, this little girl took shine to us. She's she's um, she's got a few issues. So that's inside. And as you can see, the roof is like tin and some beams. It fell down on us at one point. <laughs> it was like the, it was it, the part over us was material, and the wind blew, and the material came in and landed on us. And we were like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Like this big. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he just parks, gets out, because in, in that country you can do whatever you want, when you want, how you want. So he just stops in the middle of the road, gets out, stands on his truck and starts preaching to people. <laughs> I mean, like, people are getting born again everywhere. Um, yeah. And that's his house at the back there. Again, that land was given to him, and he raised the finances, and he built a house there, which he uses for ministers and pastors that are going through that region to, to use and stuff. So, um, yeah. yeah, and he's got pigs on the, just down the bottom on the... It's got a little farm, hasn't it, to create one. If you keep going with the photos, have you? I think they're still the same area. So we spoke at that, that um, it was a leaders meeting. And these people, it literally is the middle of nowhere. You can stop there a moment. It literally is the middle of nowhere. So they're having to travel and walk for miles. And um, do you know, they've never, they've never heard truth. It's, it's, it's hard to get your, your head around because some things to us seem so basic. Do you know, it, and I'm not talking about because we've been to Caris, because some of us haven't. I'm just talking about as a Christian in the Western world, you know, some things to us are so basic. But you say them to them and they're just like, you can see that it's like, what? And they get that it's truth, but they just didn't know. And, you know, it can be very... Again, I guess it's humbling, isn't it? That when you stand there, you see them and they're just, you're, you know, we're, we're having to, to think to ourselves, don't teach things that are too, too far, too much, because they're so like on the basic level of like, who is God? Do you know, how do you actually get born again? What does that even mean? So who am I? Do you know what I mean? Do, am I a sinner? Do you know, it's, it's all the basic stuff. But when you see them sitting there and they're just sitting and drinking it all in, they're just like, wow. And the, the pastors and the, the leaders, they're so willing to listen. They're not sitting there like, well, you know, I'm a pastor and, you know, I already know everything. They're just like, tell me. <laughs> tell me more. I want to know. And um, if you carry on with the photos, Javier, we had two days in this pl place, which is called Luero. I think that's how you pronounce it. And in the day, we did a pastor's meeting. In the evening, we did a street crusade, which is what you see in here. Um, these guys are so lively, so lively. We're kind of like, yay, let's take photos. Um, <laughs> so we don't have to join in. But we did, you can continue with the photos, Javier. I think this is, there's a few in this place. But this, this village, I think Andrew already said, it's a Muslim village. So everywhere, apart from where we are and all the people around us, there's everyone surrounding us, the little shops, the, the, the young men sitting on the motorbikes. They're all Muslims. And they're sitting, and they're not going anywhere. They're listening. They're, they're listening. They don't like... Maybe in England, if we were preaching in the street, Muslims might just be like, oh, you know what, I'm going. But these people are sitting there. I don't know if you'll see a photo on here, but literally where we were doing this crusade, we're standing on a stage speaking here. And maybe from here to the flats away, there's a massive tree. And there's this group of young men, probably 18 to 25 maybe, all Muslims, just sitting there. 
sitting there and listening. And you could see them looking and kind of shaking their heads and grinning and stuff. But they all sat there and listened. And we, we're starting to get feedback now from the big guy, Peter, who Andrew showed you. And even when we were in Uganda, they were getting fee we were getting feedback that some of those Muslims that had listened to us for two days, the third day of the crusade when we weren't there, they came forward and gave their lives to Christ. So it's absolutely awesome what's going on there, isn't it? So I think Andrew wants to talk about... I've got two pictures forward, so when that boy was standing there, just a boy and me, go on, keep going, one more thing. Oh, no, you can't, yeah. Uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So we were in that place, we were doing a crusade, and they asked us to come look at their church. So we went for a little walk, and as we were talking, the guy on the right, uh, what's his name, or Joseph, thanks Joseph, isn't it? The one in the middle there. Eh? The one on the right. That's John. Um, Joseph, I his name is, he brought that man to us. So that young guy in the middle had been, was now blind for two years. So what happened was, apparently a bee stung one of his eyes. And from that sting, over the next two years, he lost his sight completely. So as, as I was talking to him, I prayed for him, but as I was talking to him, I found out that his family fall into witchcraft. All of them. Um, and so he's, he's been in it as well. And this is, this is what happens. There's been a few people we spoke to that they get cursed. This, this is what they do. Um, and then sickness comes on their family and they start getting ill and that kind of stuff. And he was cursed. So before he was fine and then he got cursed and then a few days afterwards the beast on his eye. And then two years later he's standing there blind. And so I prayed for him. But it is really, really strange when you're standing talking to somebody and they're convinced that, that it was witchcraft that actually did this to them. You know, level. So we prayed not on, and um, I actually believe he could see, to be honest, because he was saying that he's, as I was praying for him, his eyes was tingling. So it's hard because he didn't speak yeah, I mean, our language. Just, just his translation, so through, through the God that was there, he said his eyes were tingling, so we believe that, that something will come back and we'll, we'll find that tomorrow. But yeah, Amen. There's a lot of uh, witchcraft out there. If you carry on, Javier, with the photos, um, and I'll tell you when to stop, just let it play for a minute. This is the same crusade, so that was just at the start of it. You can see, they all get very excited, you know. It's, it's, you know, it's very exciting. It's like, you can get you guys up and dancing and everything. And So these are just some of the, that's the pastor in the orange t-shirt. That's the evangelist, Peter, who we told you about. Um, that's me looking really happy. Um, and they, as Andrew said, we did pray before we left for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for these guys. We made sure they were all born again first. And we prayed that's all of them coming forward to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so many of them spoke in tongues. And between the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit and the revelation they got from the Word, we've been told that things have changed. And we're, we're just waiting for more and more testimony to come because you know yourself, once you, get the Holy, once you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you start to get truth, your life just changes, doesn't it? It's awesome. So let me just wait for these photos to move on to the next place next day, next day. Um, do you know these these girls here yeah one of them came over to me and she just said I just want to be your friend Aww. and it's like it, it, it's so strange because the they don't want anything from you you know some people think oh you go there and they're just gonna be asking for stuff and you know have you got any money have you got any of this and, you, and I'm not saying that nobody did but the people you're ministering to that's not what they want they just want it she, she literally said I just want to be your friend and that is it and I'm just like, you want to be my friend? Will you want to be my friend? But it's, it's really lovely. You can keep going, Javier. We have so many photos. We didn't put them all on here because we'd have been here till tomorrow. So <laughs> this is all in the same place we've been talking about just. We did, um, I forgot to mention, we did an altar call for healing as well, didn't we, at the end of the crusade. And uh, I think that's what they're raising their hands for there. And they, a lot of people came forward and we prayed for them to be healed. And um, you can see it there. We're waiting now to hear testimonies, but we know that I prayed for an older man who got a pain in his head for like six years or something. And then I sent John, our friend, to go and ask him if, he, if it had gone. And he said, yes, it's gone. Um, so a lot of people received healing in that town as well. Do you want to yeah, do you want to come back over here? <laughs> where we were staying, the lady Emily, she was like, not, she didn't own it, but she was the one looking after it and cleaning it and that kind of stuff. And the young man on the side, he was a security guard. 
And so it was funny actually, when we got there the first day, she was a little bit funny with us. Yeah, she was a little bit kind of, because I think we were a little bit late. So we, we, she was late and it was all a little bit. Anyway, a couple of days afterwards, she found out we were missionaries. And uh, her ears pricked up. <laughs> so she was really nice after that. But apparently she wanted to sit down and talk to us because her life was not going she, she, want, she wanted us to bless us. They wanted yeah. us to bless them, to give them something, you know, an anointing or yeah. some power or yeah. something like that. So when the security guard heard who he wanted the same. So he wanted, they came to me and they said, we want you to lay your hands on us and bless us. And I was, like, I was laughing. <laughs> I said, let's sit down and have a chat. So we sat down and we had a chat. Um, and this is after we had the chat. They both got baptised in the Holy Spirit, both speaking in tongues. And I'll just explain to them that I had nothing to give them. Um, and they, you know, we gave them some teaching. We gave them. I tried to give them some understanding about the word. Um, but this was the picture after. So two hours later, I think it was about one o'clock in the morning. I was just like, oh. <laughs> but they were both baptized in the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. So, and we gave them some literature to take away. I think what it was, they were expecting. I don't know. Well, I do know because in Africa and in England, in in every country of the world, there's so, there's a certain mentality amongst people who don't know the truth that the guy at the top. The bishop, the pastor, the preacher, the missionary, whatever, is, going, is the one with all the power. Oh. And if he can just lay his hands on you, your life will change. He will pray a prayer and everything will be different. Mm. And what Andrew explained to him was it's not true. No. He said, I'm sorry, but we ain't got nothing to give you. We can't pray a special prayer and change your life. And what he did was taught them the word. And I remember, because I wasn't there for the whole conversation, but I remember the part when Andrew explained to the young man that being born again does not change your mind. Because he thought that getting born again would change your spirit, which he didn't really understand what that was, but he thought it would change your mind. Yeah. And when we explained to him, no, your mind doesn't change. You need to read the word for that. He was just like... He was blown away. He just sat there with his mouth hanging open because nobody had ever told him. Mm -hmm. Nobody had ever told him that he's got to do something now. He thought that something was wrong because his mind hadn't altered. It was. It is really, you know, just sitting there and realising that these people don't know and that when you just tell them a simple truth it just that changes the life not the power i'm not saying that the power of god or the anointing of god doesn't change your life but it's not that what we went there to 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 touch people and change them for five minutes mm. do you know what i mean but what he, what they received in truth yeah. just just changed them completely mm. so we're gonna have to talk yeah, fast we have to go way. faster yeah so this is on the radio we did um uh, an hour slot and we did the radio so that was quite cool so if you just go through it have you that was to let the people know that, that we were, were doing there. a conference this is in another town by the way called Caso, which is like a six hour drive in the other direction mm. so we were letting people know that we were doing a conference stop there please this <laughs> this this <laughs> it's <here>. so funny <laughs> andrew this is andrew's monster no it's not so andrew was teaching about um fruit so you know when you've got the um Tree. fruit of the spirit inside you you no, have no, 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 no. no i'm just explaining you have you have the, the fruit of peace and joy, and when you have sin inside of you, you have the fruit of sin. And he kept doing this. It's the fruit. So I, I thought I'd put that photo in so you could all see the fruit. So, so what I was explaining was that sin, the sins in your life that we see, are fruit. They're, they're the fruit of the root that's in you, which is sin. And do you know what? As we, were at, we had a break and we were talking, and as I was looking, I see like pastors talking, and they were, they were, doing, they were, all, doing, they were all doing this. No, the thing is, when you give them easy ways to understand, they take it. Yeah, and yeah, they, yeah. no, that in their minds, they're, when they're thinking of sin, they're thinking of fruit. fruit. <laughs> you can keep going, have you? Yeah. It looks like he's doing a monster, doesn't it? Yeah. Th this is a pastor's conference in a place called Caso. Yeah, just keep going, mate. On the, on the first day, that was teaching them spirit, soul, and body, but on the first day, we had 50 pastors, and then on the last day, we had 85. And it wasn't just pastors, it was pastors, leaders in just general ministry. Okay, and like, you can stop there, Javier. Leaders in different areas, like they invited political leaders and leaders from the police and bishops. And so it wasn't just pastors in ministry. But that, that conference was amazing because I don't know if you guys know, I'm sure you do. But in Africa, I don't think the women are very, you know, it's not, it's not the women normally. Do you know what I mean? It's normally the men. It's normally the bishop. It's normally the pastor. And uh, forgive me if you're listening, our African friends. Uh, but the women are normally, like, just, you know, serving. You know, they're going to get the food. They're going to get this. They're going to get that. Um, so it is very strange for me sometimes to stand there and kind of be... 
because sometimes when you're teaching, especially to, to ministers, you've got to let them know that they're wrong. Do you know what I mean? What, what, you, what you believe in at the moment is wrong. This is not right. You need, to, you need to be believing the truth. And sometimes it's very strange as a woman to stand in front of this whole room full of men. But I can honestly say that on the last day, um, I was supposed to be teaching. Who knows here that I like notes? Yeah, I like notes. Guys, I could give you my notes. You'd be like, that's exactly what you said. I'm like, yes, I know. <laughs> um, I like notes. And I prepared my notes for the, the last day. And I was teaching on Believer's Authority because I knew they needed to know about Believer's Authority. And then Andrew taught on something. And we had a little time of questions and answers. And all of their questions were about sin. It was always like about, so if you do this, is this a sin? And what happens if you're born again and then you murder somebody? And You know, all these random questions. So it occurred to me that they hadn't got a clue really what sin was, what part it actually played in the gospel. So I thought I'm going to give them, <laughs> Julia's doing the fruit. I thought I'm going to give them an illustration. And I just said to them, like, you know, look at this lectern. Here's my child. Here's me. This thing's in the way here. It's an obstacle. What would you do with it? And they all agreed you'd move it. So I said to them, yeah, exactly. That's what God did. He moved sin out the way. Sin was never his focus. He just moved it out the way to get to his child. And now we're supposed to focus on the connection, us and God, the relationship, the connection that's been restored. But for some reason, they're looking past that, still looking for the obstacle and still talking about sin. And for the first time ever in my life, that led into me then speaking to this room full of pastors. And my brain all the time was thinking, Selena, what are you doing? Because I'm then speaking to these guys about love, the love of God, yeah? And literally trying to get through to them that you may be the most important person in this room. You may be the bishop who's been serving in ministry for 60 years, but you are no different to the homeless man that just got born again. And explaining the love of God. And I can honestly say I've never seen a room full of people so... They were just, even Andrew and Carl, they were, they were just like, it was like, it, it wasn't me speaking to, it wasn't my prepared notes. <laughs> it was the conviction of the Holy Spirit that came upon them to realize the love of God on them. And that there's actually nothing, no knowledge that can do anything without the love of God. Mm. Nothing at all. And I know that afterwards, um, the guy who organized that conference, he's already got back to us to let us know that there were pastors and ministers in that room who've come to him afterwards and said to him, I've been a minister for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and I know nothing, nothing. I've got to start now. I'm going to go back to my church and I'm going to start right from the beginning, from scratch, and I'm going to start building. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was just seeing the, what God wanted to say to these people, being delivered to them. And it didn't provoke a reaction what I was thinking was, I'm a woman here, and I'm, like, berating these men, saying to them, what have you been doing, man? No, I was actually like, you know, what are you doing? You know, what are you, what are you thinking about? What are you doing? And I'm thinking in my head, Selena, you should stop, you know. Um, but it was the Holy Spirit, and it was amazing to see how he worked. Mm. Do you want to speak about that? So this is, a, we went to a jail, and we spoke to the prisoners. So there's, there was three rooms in the jail, probably ten by ten. Nothing in the rooms apart from concrete walls, concrete floor, Nothing. And there was 27 men in the two rooms. And there was one woman in the, the other room. And she had some sponge on the floor that she sat on. That was it. That was their jail. And so they all came out. We, we, we uh, spoke to them. And you can see them all giving their life to Jesus. So this is the altar call. So they all stood up and gave their life to Jesus. But, man, we need that kind of jail over here. No Xboxes. No comfortable beds. Do you know what I mean? There needs to be a reality check. Those people over there have got zero. Yeah, and they're put in a room to left, just left all day to their own devices. They get, I think they get fed twice a day, just some bread and some water, literally. That's it. Anyway, keep moving, mate. You know, they've, they've heard about Jesus, but nobody's ever explained the gospel. No, no. Because everyone in Africa, they've they all are. heard about him. They've just never heard the gospel. And the day after, if you just yeah. pause there a sec, the day after, we were able to take every single one of them a Bible, yeah. thanks to a donation from Sharon. Ah. <laughs> so every single one of them received a Bible, and they were so blown away just yeah. to receive a Bible. They were over the moon. Yeah. So and got... 16 of them were healed as well, yeah, yeah. instantly in that room, because we said to them afterwards, do any of you have pain? Do any of you have a physical problem that you need healing for? And then we prayed, and we asked who has had a physical difference, whose pain has gone who is different, and we counted 16 boys that after getting born again were healed as well. 
So this is a this is a, like a, a girls' orf, it's like an orphanage. All of these girls here, um, because there's only women there, there's no no boys at all. All of these girls have been picked up off the streets. Some of them have got babies, um, from the eldest down to the youngest, and this is where they stay. But if you carry on going, have you? Yeah. So. <laughs> We ministered to these, these young girls and we played some games. We did the Cupid Shuffle. We taught them dancing, that kind of stuff. Um, and this is one of the guards. He, he got born again, baptised in the Holy Spirit. Pause there. So paint there, mate. Um, and after we'd finished, we says, we're going we're gonna to now pray for everybody to receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we, we did that. And as soon as we finished praying for them for the Holy Spirit, two of the girls started manifesting a demon in there. Now... It was that the girl in the yellow that Selena was just holding, and another girl. Same sight there, she was there, yeah. Now look at look at her, look how thin she is. Four men could not control that woman. She was like, I think she's 18, was she 18? 17. 17. I mean, she went. So for two hours, the place was just mayhem. There were people <laughs> we had to get all the kids out because there were people, all the kids were screaming and ah! and then they started singing, you know, trying to worship, and I said, we need to get these people out of here. So we got them all out. And there was just two girls left in there with, I think there was four men and, and about three women, two or three women. And they went berserk. Screaming, growling. Some of the, the sounds in their voices was not good, was it? And so Selena can finish the rest of the story. <laughs> Do you know, this is, it's not, it's not my first experience like that. It happened back in 2019. There were five girls after getting baptised in the Holy Spirit. What you have to realise is they didn't get baptised in the Holy Spirit because they weren't even born again. They weren't even born again. It was the fact that the baptism of the Holy Spirit came into the room, came into the atmosphere, and then the, the demon manifested in them. But that young girl you see there, um, I'm not going to tell you her name just because I'm on live stream as well. So, But that young girl, she's only 17, and... Um, she she was screaming and shouting and that. And do you know something? I mean, I'm going to tell you what happened. Um, just because it woke something up in my brain, I was like, wow. Do you know, we were praying for her. And these are orphans, remember, so they've not got parents yet. But as we were commanding a demon to come out of here, she she started sobbing and crying. Now, she, did, she didn't want this demon to be in her. I don't think she had any understanding, really. She started sobbing and crying. And she was actually saying, Daddy, don't leave me. She could actually see the enemy leaving her she could she could see him she wasn't looking at us she was looking at something else she was sobbing daddy don't leave me and you know what it what it what i realized was that even in this country i don't think we realize we underestimate the fact that if god is not your father then the devil is because sometimes we don't really want to acknowledge the spiritual we go about in the natural world and the spiritual is only good stuff but if every single person that's not born again has a father Mm -hmm. And it's the devil. Well, and we Christ. don't understand sometimes how deeply rooted he is in people's lives. They don't even know. They don't, you wouldn't go up to like a, a, just a random person on the street and be like, did you know the devil's your father? They'd probably laugh at you because they don't believe in him anyway. But it's actually true because there is. And we, we heard it over there and it's the same here. An epidemic of fatherlessness. An epidemic of kids with no fathers. Kids with absent fathers. And it's given the enemy such a power in people's lives mm -hmm. that he actually is people's daddy. Do you know what I mean? And I, I realised that as this girl was sobbing, that she really, really believed that the devil was someone who cared about her, someone who loved her, and that if he left her, it was going to be horrible. And afterwards, though, after, you know, we'd commanded him to go. She wasn't born again, so we commanded him to go, but it was still a bit of a, a, bit of a fight in the sense of if she doesn't get born again... But she got to a, a calm, a very calm part. Do you, do you know another thing that was a little bit, little bit freaky, but also very awesome as well, was there was a point where she was lying on the floor. And I don't know about everybody else, but I get a little bit annoyed at the devil. Who gets a bit annoyed at the devil? Come on, guys. I get a bit annoyed, and it annoys me when he starts doing all this mad stuff. And I'm just like, would you shut up? Do you know what I mean? I'm like, do you know, I'm like, devil, we know who you are. Just stop it, man. You're just getting on my nerves. And I knelt down and I, she got her eyes shut and I was very aware that I wanted her to open her eyes and I wanted her to look into my eyes because I wanted to see her eyes. I didn't want to just be trying to talk to her while she's wherever. And she opened her eyes before she got born again and she literally reached my face like this and it wasn't her speaking, it was the enemy. And he was like, ah, oh, Jesus, the image of Jesus. Part of me was like, the devil's touching my face. <laughs> and then the other part of me was like, you recognise Jesus. Yeah. Um, so do you know what? It was... For those of you that have never experienced it, it's very different. For those of you that have, then you know what I'm talking about. But once you know your authority and you know there's nothing to be scared of and that the devil does have to listen to you, 
He does have to listen to you. Mm. So when I said to him, you know what, devil, shut up, you're getting on my nerves. He has to listen, do you know what I mean? But it was amazing to see that eventually she sat down and we were like, are you born again? And she was like, no. So we led her in the prayer of salvation and she was confessing Jesus is Lord, Jesus yeah, is amen. Lord. Yeah. We went back the next day. Well, that was just after that, by the way. She wouldn't let me go. She was just like, hugging. she was sobbing because she'd never released this. In 17 years, the people in the orphanage said they've never seen her misbehave. They've never seen her do anything wrong. They didn't know she had this inside of her. She, mm. They didn't know what was going on inside. And she was just sobbing because of the freedom and the release. When we went back the next day, the photo that you saw, you saw a photo earlier when David was speaking. It was the same girl, really close up with me standing next to her. She's so different. You can actually see the freedom in her eyes. And I'm not saying that the journey's over and that she's, she's not going to struggle. But we know that she's free now. And sometimes, because you know, do you know what? I don't know what it is, but the guys in Africa, they're amazed that when people come from Europe or wherever else, the demons manifest because they don't manifest for them. <laughs> it's kind of like for us, you walk down the street and everybody looks normal. But really, there's a lot of demons out there, you know. But until somebody tackles them, you don't know they're there. And these guys in Africa, they're blown away because these things, they can just go about their daily life. And this girl could have lived for 50, 60, 70 years being tormented. And nobody would have ever realized it was even going on. So it's awesome when you see that God sends you somewhere. And it's like, devil? <laughs> oh, we, we came to give you your marching orders. So okay, that you. was awesome. If so you want to continue, we'll we see what... Go, we yeah, we, we, we have got time. We've got enough time. That was just a little baby that was really cute, so I took its picture. Well, I got somebody too. Do you want to talk about this? This is Sunday. This is last yeah, Sunday. Keep, keep going, keep going. So this was just a church that was a, a brand new church. We went and ordained. So we, we prayed there with the pastor there. And we opened the church. We blessed it. Um, and then we had to go really quickly. To another <laughs> to, church? To this, this one? To another church. Yeah. Uh, and again, we just ministered to these guys, baptism of the Holy Spirit, people were born again, healed. It's just, I mean, it was just constant all of the time. And the, again, the pastor's asking us for some more resources and that kind of stuff, because what we were teaching, they've never heard before. But we just, were teaching basic stuff. Just guys. basic stuff, real basic stuff. Um, yeah. I think we did... I'm just trying to remember. This is only last Sunday. It feels like forever ago. This is all of the guys coming forward to get baptised in the Holy Spirit. Mm. And we taught them a few things. And I taught them about casting their cares on the Lord. And then after, do you know the love actions? Because the pastor got up and he was like, what are we going to do? And they're all going, cast our cares. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome how they just take what you mm. say. So they're, this is a prison. Keep, yeah, just keep going. The, the prison pause we went there. to. Pause there. Pause there because we have two, no more photos of that prison. 290 inmates... And I think there was only six or seven people who didn't put their hand up to receive Christ. So that we gave our testimonies. It was awesome. It was only about an hour and 20 we were there for. An hour. We and an just hour. an hour, yeah. Do you know what? We weren't supposed to go there. We were late. Yeah. And normally you only get a short period of time. But the grace of God allowed us an hour to mm, speak to them. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to pause a second, have you? Do you know, because Andrew, you, you said that really quickly. But those 250 guys that got born again, we, we have actually got enough time to get to the end. <laughs> Those guys that got born again, sometimes people think, oh, yeah, you know, they just put their hands up because you were there and the one who, because you're Westerners and stuff. Mm. But, you know, we always ensure that what we say to them is enough for their understanding. We never go for five minutes and say, do you want to receive Jesus? No. Do you know what I mean? There were three of us. And I think Andrew shared testimony. I shared a story that really illustrates the gospel and what Jesus did for them. And then Carl explained what Jesus did on the cross, why he did it, and the fact that you have to make the decision to be born again. Yeah. So whenever we ask these people, we don't ever just do it flippantly and be like, do you want to be saved? Mm. You know, we, we ensure, maybe not every one of them understood, but we ensure that we give them everything they need to understand what they're doing. And when they receive Jesus, these guys have heard about Jesus. They yeah. believe in God. They've just never been told the gospel and mm. what it means for them and how it sets them free. So even, even the jail guard, the woman, when we said, if you want to raise your hand, yeah, she's women, got jail. her hand in the air, like the, the jail guard, and she gave her life to Jesus as well. So that was amazing. And standing outside there, I don't even know the person's name. I wasn't involved in the conversation, but a visitor got saved because yeah. Carl went oh, and spoke to There's a car outside, <laughs> yeah, two people in the car. So Carl went and spoke to them. Yeah. If so you continue with the photos, this is the same place, the same pastor's conference. Do you like my African dress, guys? Yeah. It was a gift last year. 
So this is the same conference. This was at the end. Some of the ministers got baptised in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit yeah. That's that room full of pastors and bishops and leaders. So these were just three days we spent talking to them. This is... A school we went to. Do you want to... Again, it was just a, a boarding school. We spoke to the, the teens and gave them the gospel. Didn't so, have a lot of time with them. No, no, no. A few of them got born again, but it, they enjoyed the football as well again. <laughs> uh, but you can see, I mean, it was just... We've been given things, you know, space has been open for us and time has been open for us, so it's been awesome. Because a lot of these places we go there, to... Javier, please. A lot of these places, they don't let people go in and do that. Do you know what I mean? But we've been shown favour by God, so we, we, they let us in. On the um, day before we... Because we are in Caso, and before we left for Kampala, we bought some food and stuff to take back to the orphanage and the prison. And that's when we saw the girl who'd been delivered, yeah. looking a lot better. And when we were with, with the street vendors... Um, I think if you go back one photo, maybe, or two, um, they were just talking to That's the it. street vendors. And I was waiting in the car, and two of the street vendors got, got born again born as well. Again. <laughs> Do you know, it's like, it's like in some, some countries, people are so ready, they just have never been told the truth. Mm. They're yeah. ready to... Because in Africa, they, they love God. Do you know, there is a lot of Muslims as well, but the majority of people love God. They just don't know how to get to him. Yeah. So some of the street vendors were born again. And then if you just continue there, I think we're nearly coming to the end now. Yeah. You have an awesome video to finish this off, guys. So that picture was, we went on a safari, um, which was nice. And that lady there, we went to visit. That's um, an, uh, an auntie of the guy. And she got born again. Um, she got baptised in the Holy Spirit. Okay. And she got healed in the space of five minutes. Huh? And then after that happened, Carl, with the blue T-shirt, gave her a word about that she would conceive a child by next year. Because apparently uh -huh. she didn't have any... We didn't know, but she didn't have any children. And while he was speaking, she said, I've been trying to conceive, but not been able to. So the word he was giving her was confirming what was going on so in her life. visit the baby next so, year. So, born again, baptised in the Holy Spirit, and healed within five minutes. It was just bananas. That was a random encounter, by the way, as well. It wasn't a, pr no, a planned just... one. It was just, oh, let's go and say hello to this lady. <laughs> and then the, we travelled back to Kampala, and we went to a, a house fellowship where... It was a small fellowship called Destined to Win, mm. if you pause there. Um, and we just shared with them again, didn't we? And Andrew had a few words for people. It, it was just seeing that God has, God's just got things to deliver to, to everybody, hasn't he? He just needs messengers to go and deliver the message. Yeah. But then, this is our last day, we went to visit a place called Remnant Generation. So Carl had got this connection. We went to see what it was about. And they've got um, churches in Uganda, but they've also got um, a refuge for teenage mothers. And also, um, they've got a part, it's not, um, a re when I say refuge, they can live there. They've also got a part called Fathers Arise. So they're reach they're in the slums, but they're reaching out to women that, women that have been raped and women that have been forced into marriage and they've got babies, but they're just babies themselves. You can see, these, these are, that's in that place. And they're doing such a, an awesome work. And this is the first time we'd ever met them. But like we didn't even know they existed. So God's put us in touch with these guys. That's a wood printing machine. Andrew thinks it's amazing. You could pause there, Javier. Andrew loves that machine. But it was, it was great to see, you know, the same problems that we have. We kept saying to them, we're no different to you guys, you know. England's the same. It might look different, but same problems, mm. same pain, mm. same things people are going through. But the guys we went to visit, we will connect with them next year because what they're doing is, is amazing, yeah. isn't it? The way they're raising up the, the young boys to take responsibility, to learn skills, but they're also reaching out to the men to, to teach them how to be fathers, biblical fathers, because even over there, it's, for them, it's an epidemic of fatherlessness, an epidemic of boys and girls with no fathers. Mm. So they're really reaching out to that. Yep. Now, I know we've got just two pictures, I think, left. Um, that's the girl I told you about. This picture here, do you want to yeah, yeah. so, come back into yeah, that? Yeah, I'm coming back, I'm coming back. So, <laughs> so the guy on the right... Abel, he's one of the guys who's in the team. So we went to that, the jail. You saw them all sitting down, and they all gave their life to Jesus. So a few days after, so we came back. It was yesterday. Okay, well, there you go. Yesterday. We got a message from Abel saying he had a knock at the door. And he opened the door, and the guy in the middle was standing there. And he said, do you recognize me? And he said, no, I don't know who you are. He said, I'm one of the guys who was in the jail and got born again. He says, after that, uh, that encounter, God has become real to me, and I need to find out more. So we actually tracked him down to where he lived, 
found him and wanted to find out more. The guy with the red hat on is the taxi driver. So they, over there, they use motorbikes for taxis. Bodder bodders. They're called bodder bodder, yeah, yeah. And so he's the taxi driver. So what happened was, obviously, with the conversation, he brought, him into the, brought them into the house. They sat down, they talked. The guy with the red hat got baptised in the Holy Spirit, got born again. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and then, so, so now that's going on. And now they've connected. Um, he's discipling them both. So there you go. Yeah. This is awesome. So awesome. we're not going to go forward. No, oh, stop there. there we're is. going to show you this video in a moment. <laughs> um, but the first photo you saw at the beginning with all those men surrounding us, one woman in that video as well as, as, well as me, um, they're all over there on the ground. So they're discipling, they're following these people. Abel, that guy who was in that photo, he actually gave his contact to the prison, the guards. Yeah. So it was all the men could contact him. And even the prison where the 200 and so men gave their lives, he gave his contact to them. And then all of the pastors' conferences have contacts with people in the team. So everybody has contacts. Mm. And I'm, I'm not joking. that if, if they could keep us there, they, they wouldn't have sent us back. They're like, you need to bring, bring everybody. Move to Uganda. Bring your church to Uganda. We're like, OK. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to play you a video. You've got to listen carefully because these guys' accents are strong. Now, these two men, yeah, Godfrey awesome. is the taller man, yeah? He's been our contact since 2019, and he is a lovely man. He's so, so lovely. He's got, he speaks very good English, doesn't always use the right words, so please listen carefully. John is the guy we've been our contact as well since 2019. He's been on every trip with us. He's the guy who translates. Now, all I can say is just enjoy the video, because this is them, real and raw. This is how they are. We have so much fun with these guys because they're just full of God and so, so funny. So enjoy this video. So, yeah, Godfrey, go ahead. Yes, uh, the, the pastor's meeting was uh, quite a big meeting. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, by the standards of this area, mm. we had 85, a lot of 85 pastors coming in. Yeah, the first day? Yeah, that was the second day. Okay. The first day had about 60, and so mm. we had yeah. 85 the second day. But that's mm. a very big number. Of people. Because this place is pastorally populated, you know, yeah. it's a pastoralist place. Populated. And actually, the season they are in mm. is a planting season. So. Yeah. You know, people go out in their gardens to plant, uh, to do everything. But, uh, I mean, people came. Yeah, in, these, these were numbers. leaders, yeah. 85 leaders. Yeah. And some of them traveling, right. like I said, from as far as 30 to 35 kilometers away, traveling mm -hmm. to listen to the word. Yes. And the testimony is that the words they had were mm -hmm. life-changing. Wow. This was, like, new to them. Yes, what is ordinary to, that, to yeah. us mm -hmm. was great revel revelation yeah, to them. Absolutely. And we saw tremendous change. And so they were yeah. saying that, you guys, why don't you stay here and mm -hmm. teach us? Yeah. Uh, they feel like they can do anything mm -hmm. to uh, have the team around for a longer time. Actually, they were requesting mm -hmm. if the team could stay uh, along, yeah, for longer. probably yeah. a conference of about a week's time, because mm -hmm. they see their lives change. Mm -hmm. And others, as uh, one of them was saying, what have we been teaching for all this long? I've yeah, been yeah. a bishop, what am I teaching? Yeah. This is new stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah, so actually, the word was amazing. We praise God for, 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 for reboot ministry, because even us who, mm. who have been part of the team, yeah. I mean, when you hear the word, your mind is refreshed, your faith is encouraged. Mm. So we are really, really grateful for the word. And so that was a part of the conference, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Conference. So we go to, to the prison. Yeah, I the mean. prisons, wow. Yeah, yeah. We go to the prisons. <laughs> Everybody in the prison God, cells. Can you first talk about the, mm. the, the jail? Uh, uh, not no talk about the mm. police cell. Yeah, the, the police, police cell, yes, yes. The police, it has. Yes. Uh, at the time we came in, there were 28 inmates. Yes. One was a lady. One was a lady. Yes. And the rest uh, 27 were, were, yeah, yeah, were, yeah, young men. were young men. Yeah. And so the team spoke to them, Carl Schuller. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember Andrew gave his testimony. Yes. And Selena came in. And I remember some of them, if you see, actually, were shedding tears. Mm -hmm. Not because they are in prison, but because they are listening to the word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all of them gave their life to Christ. All of them. All of them Amen. gave their life to yeah, Christ. That's true. All that's right? True. We yeah. left no stone unturned, yeah. really. It was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even the officers, actually. Yeah. The officers yeah. were touched. Yeah. yeah. So and yeah, so, the, and, and so to me that yeah, was quite yeah big. yeah, and of course yes, the word, mm. uh, the light was turned on. Mm. Uh, people, uh, uh, of course, Jesus changes yeah, lives, yeah. but of course also the, the token of love, mm. the, the physical gifts yeah. that uh, 
uh, the, the, the team gave. Uh, yeah, the, the team bought food, the team cakes. bought drinks for them. Yes, yeah, yeah. And really there were celebrations. But the entire police station yes. was turned, should I say downside up or upside down? Upside down. That's oh. what I grew no <laughs> it was upside down. It was quite big. Okay. The other one was, uh, fast forward, is uh, the prisons. The prison. Yeah. I mean, this is a big prison. It's a big prison. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it had, is it the main prison? It's the main prison in the area. Yeah, yeah. And the officer in charge was so happy. At the time we reached, you know, when he knew it was us, it was yeah. the boat, yeah. we came at a time mm. when no visitors allowed at the prison, but yes. because it was reboot, yes. they allowed us a whole hour yeah. to speak to the prisoners. Mm -hmm. They called them in, mm. and we spoke to 290 prisoners in the area. Amen. I remember That's only true. six didn't, didn't put up their hands. Mm. But when the team testified, yeah. Uh, I saw all hands up, and what I liked about this, you could see people shedding tears, yeah. you know, among mm -hmm. the prisoners. And like I said, I think not because they are in prison yeah. or feeling sorry, but you could see the effect of the word yeah. that was spoken. Some of them had never heard the gospel before. Amen. They probably heard about Jesus, but they had never heard the gospel yeah. uh, unveiled to them in the manner that was brought up. Mm -hmm. All the hands were, you know, right up. Yes. And so all these, uh, this is a tremendous change. This yeah. is impact. I don't know whether you understand what this means mm -hmm. to our country. Yeah, yeah. The whole region was changed because the entire prisons, you know, and, and the officer was happy. He didn't want to let us go. He was engaging us, you know, mm -hmm. after this. So really, yeah. I want to say that uh, Reboot team yeah. should plan to come probably for about a month. <laughs> A month. Yeah, we need we need these guys for a month. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's possible. It's doable. <laughs> if it were possible, really, because the work is here. Yes. I mean, the work is here. Yeah, Pastor Andrew, you have to look into that yeah. sometime. Uh, man. I request the, <laughs> I request them to look into this. The work. There's yeah. so much work to be yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, in, in yeah. This but uh, basically, that ministry in prison touched me so much yeah. because I I can feel uh, I haven't been in that kind of life, mm. but I can feel. How, what it means to be in prison. You, you could see they were set free. Yes. When Andrew spoke to them, he yes. said, you see, yeah. you can be outside, but mm -hmm. a prisoner. Yeah. And yet be in prison, but free. But be free. And yeah. you gave an example of Paul, who wrote mm -hmm. probably 90% of the New Testament, he was, and some of the letters were, he was in prison, yeah. but telling people outside mm -hmm. that, you know, be joyful, yeah, yeah. be joyful. Mm -hmm. And so this really encouraged them, and by the time we left, you could see uh, yes. uh, the power of Jesus Christ yeah. upon these prisons. The other place, fast forward, was... Yeah. Uh, the orphanage. Yes. Mm. Yeah, the orphanage. The orphanage was also an amazing time. Yeah. Uh, because I mean, mm. you know, people think about orphanages. They think when we talk about orphanages, they think about taking, uh, you know, uh, things, supplies, things, you know, supplies, whatever, whatever. Mm. But this was quite different because uh, the young girls and boys there mm. in mm. the in the orphanage received salvation. Some of them uh, received the baptism. They're over the Holy 30? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, some of them received uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and also uh, deliverance, you know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we could say that heaven broke loose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we were chatting around, playing with the children, and they ministered to them. Mm -hmm. I, I like the way reboot ministers were handling mm -hmm. the children. Yeah. I, I didn't know how to handle children. Yeah. But I like the way, you know, that dance thing they were doing, yeah. you know, with the children yeah. and patterns. Yes. And then mm. the feeling, the infilling or the baptism of yeah. the Holy Ghost yeah. is what changed things in that place. Yeah, yeah. actually, when we thought now we have prayed for them, and we are done, we are getting we're going into away. our car, we are going. Whew. Wow, that was now... Demons mm. started manifesting among the children and yeah. noise all over the place mm -hmm. and, you know... Mm -hmm. You know, the devil couldn't stand this, yeah. the infilling, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And so I remember, uh, you know, oh, it was serious there. Yeah. You call it deliverance? We, we, <laughs> <laughs> and we so take they, the whole day to... They, they, yeah, yeah, they, they prayed, for, you know, yeah, casting out devil, you yeah, know, devil. Yeah. You need someone yeah. manifesting. I remember yeah. mm. I was trying to handle one of the young girls. But she had, it's like it was supernatural she, she was power. So strong, yeah. She was so strong that three guys yeah. couldn't handle her. Yeah. But these guys know how, you know, know how to do their thing. Yeah, Through the word so, of God, they yeah. cast out the devils. Amen. Everything calmed down. Yeah. And by the time we left, one of the guys didn't want to leave Selena. Yeah, yeah. She's called, I think yeah. it was Brenda. Brenda. Yeah, Brenda. Ah, they became yeah. so much friends. When we took yeah. gift the next day, she was so mm. excited. Mm. Excited. She didn't mm. want to leave her. Yeah, yeah. You could see a change, you know, mm. literally change yeah. in people's lives. So really, um, mm. I don't know. Yeah. So friends. Friends. Uh, friends brothers friends. and sisters. We can't say it all. All over the world. We mm. want to thank you so much. So much. Because so much. I believe 
Mm. As much as God has sent a uh, reboot ministry yeah. uh, with Pastor Andrew and mm. Pastor Selina, mm. they cannot and do Shula, this. Kyle, yes, and, uh, they cannot mm. do this uh, big, big job mm. on their own. On their own. So yeah. we are so so grateful wow. that you could send them with your prayer, mm. with your financial Absolutely. support, yeah. uh, with uh, with love. Mm. And we want to say, we want to look forward to we having do, we, we need more teams, at least yeah. twice a year, more yeah. teams. Yeah. I don't see people yeah. should come, more yeah. teams. Yeah. At least a group of yeah. 19 yes. or to 10 yeah. people, yeah. twice a year. That would yeah. really be good. Yes. Because yeah. God is doing a mighty harvest in these end times, in this country. You yeah. see, yeah. people are easily receiving the gospel. Yes. One of the last ones is we were visiting, I think on some rest day, okay. visiting a lady who yeah. was selling drugs. I mean, a drug, a drug shop, what do you call that? A pharmacy yeah, or something? Yeah, a pharmacy. And she accepted Christ. Yeah, she re absolutely. accepted Christ. You know, they spoke to her and said, yeah. "Do you know about Jesus?" Mm -hmm. She thought she knew. Mm -hmm. They said, "Are you baptized in the Holy Ghost?" She said, "What? What? What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. uh, what does that mean? I was yeah. baptized in water." They said, "No, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Baptism of the Holy Ghost." Mm -hmm. And she wondered, first of all, who are these visitors who yes. visit me at such a time? Yes. She thought these were angels. I guess yeah. you could see she was receiving. So mm -hmm. she accepted. Jesus. And I remember Andrew prayed for her. Yes. And she she received immediately, yeah. spoke in yeah. tongues. Yes. She was healed immediately. Yes, her and back was healed and, and boom. Yes, and Shula got in word of knowledge yeah. that as much as she she she's doing all that, she was sad mm. in, yeah. in her heart mm. because she, she doesn't have a child. Mm. Yeah, so uh, uh, Shula prayed for her and we believe, we gave her a word that by this time next year, you will be having a baby. Yes. Yeah, we'll be having Amen. a baby. So, brother and sister, yeah. we just want to thank you once yeah. again. We yeah. can't say it all yeah, yeah. so much, yeah. but we thank you so much. We thank yeah. you, Bishop Andrew, Selina, yes. and yes. Carl Schuller, Amen. and all of you who are out there. Amen. We expect to see you more. Thank you so much once again. Amen. We bless the Lord for yeah, you. Yeah, we love you so much. Amen. We look forward to having you. Again. We look forward to supporting the ministry Amen. in Jesus' name. And we shall name. give you all the support you need. Amen. God Amen. bless you all. Amen. Amen. Those those guys are just so funny, honestly. You know, when God connects you with people, you just you just connect. And these guys, it's like we've known them all our lives. It's, they're just awesome. They're, you can see they're funny, man, honestly. We had so much fun with them, but they're so powerful as well. You know, they, both of these guys, they've, they've been to Carriers as well. So God didn't just connect us with people that were Christians. He connected us with like-minded people, people that know truth, people that understand authority, people that understand where we're coming from. So it's, it's just amazing. It's just great that we were able to go there. And we know that there's going to be continual testimony after testimony after testimony. And we will keep you guys updated. But we wanted to share with you. We didn't want to just be like, oh, yeah, it was awesome. Do you know what I mean? We wanted you guys to know what God has done. Because it's not just us. Do you know what I mean? As a family, do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter who goes. But as a family, that's what, that's what God did. He was awesome. And um, I'm actually now going to... Um, Ask Louise to come up because she's going to share a little talk with us before we have worship. Um, so Andrew could sit back down if he wants to. <laughs> Devon, could you stick that back on the um, stage for Louise, please? Thank you. I thought I was going to be serenaded. No? Some music in the background. Wow, wasn't that awesome? Thank you, Devon. Wasn't that awesome? Yes. So please forgive me while I speak this. I thought I was speaking before, so some of the tense is behind uh, it, uh, beforehand. But as you can tell, today's service was about the Uganda trip and the Uganda mission trip. And Selena specifically asked me to write about uh, missions. So missions, and I was going to ask, has anyone here, and live stream, please, 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 please write in the chat. Has anyone here ever been on a mission trip? Okay, where? Devon? Dumfries. Dumfries. Yes. Romania. Norway. Where? Czech Republic. Sharon. India. France. Uganda. Amen. Okay, has anyone not been on a mission trip? Your time is coming. <laughs> Okay, so this is an offering talk. Has anyone ever sewn into somebody else's mission trip to go? Thank you. Awesome. So, live stream, remember, you two have to write in the chat. So now I'm going to ask you, I'm going to describe a word to you, 
and I would like you to tell me what that word is. So, what word am I describing from the Merriam Dictionary? To move on a course, to travel to a place, to travel and stay in a place for a period of time, to move out or away from a place expressed or implied, to take a certain course or follow a certain procedure, to pass by means of processing like a journey. What word have I just described to you? Sorry? Mission. Wrong. Wrong. Pilgrimage. No. Missionary. No. Pardon? Adventure. Good. No. no. Journey. No. Hey? Holiday. No. <laughs> Well, they're all very good guesses, but I just described the word go to you. So what is a mission trip? A mission trip, thank you, Mr. Ozazi, a mission trip is to go. And in Matthew 28, 19 to 20, and I'm reading from the King James Version. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. So I've looked at multiple versions of Matthew 28, 19, and they all say, go therefore, or therefore go, except for the Berean little one, literal di uh, Bible, which says, therefore having gone. So they've already left. They didn't wait for a, a, a talk. They didn't wait for anything. They didn't go to Karis. They just went. And the Bible says that a mission trip is go. In the Gospel of John, the words sent and send are used about 60 times. They refer to the title of God, which is one who sends. And Jesus is the one who was sent. God sends people to go on his behalf. There are sent ones and there are senders. Some of you, God has put in your heart to go. And some of you, God has put in your heart to send. Either way, it's an honor and it is a privilege. You can go and stay in a mud hut or you can sow into someone else who will. Either way, either way, it is they are both just as important, the one who sends and the one who's sent. You will you did hug a child in the orphanage. You will minister to people who are on the streets. You will pray with those who are in prisons. You will provide for a need. You will see healings, deliverance, salvation, and raise the dead. Through the one who was sent, and all, might I add, without jet lag. None of the hugs, the ministry, the prayer, the provision, the miracles, the signs, and the wonders happen without you. Your seed, your money, no matter how big or small you think it is, enables God to work through and move for the ones who he sends. Mark 4.20 tells us that when we sow, there's a 30, 60, and 100-fold return. When God sows, when God sends, sorry, he is sowing, and God always gets a hundredfold return. When God sent Jesus, he provided through gold, frankincense, and myrrh. If God, when God, sends you, he will provide through, maybe not through heavenly pavement, frankincense, and myrrh, but he has placed the provision into other people's hearts. When you go, you are obeying God. When you sow, you are obeying God. And obedience is better than the sacrifice. It took finances to go to Uganda. There were flights, places to stay, food to eat, and transportation and fuel. Now, I get my visionary hat on now. Now I'm thinking and seeing a reboot plane. I googled the biggest passenger plane that is currently uh, in operation at the moment, and that's an Airbus. A380-800, and it has room for 853 passengers on two decks. So that's 7, 10, 19 people you want to come to Uganda, there's 853 possible that could come. 
It is on two decks. Its length is almost 73 meters. It has a wingspan of 83 meter, 80 meters, and it costs $445.6 million, or about 300 million pounds, so it's cheaper. So I can see it full now with a load of excited rebooters, full with a hold full of not just luggage, but with suitcases and boxes full of footballs, crayons for the kids, toothpaste, toiletries, medicines, shoes, clothing, school supplies, and of course, Andrew and Selena's face printed on the front. Can you see it? Can you see it? Yeah. Maybe we could choose one of the photos that they uh, showed us today. So I don't believe that when God provided this church, uh, this church build, building, it was happenstance. This church has been here for 100 years and supported many, many missionaries. And now Keystone Church will continue. I ask you today to pray and seek the Lord about whether in this season you are a sent one or a send one. Today we will hear about, well, we have heard about how God moved in Uganda. Next year there is another trip and God has already placed it in your hearts to go or to send. I ask you today, will you go or will you send? So on my way here today, I was listening to a teaching by Lisa Bevere on Girls with Swords. And she asked two questions. And these questions are based on a question that she asked her online followers, which was, what does the cross mean? And the top one was love. So I ask you the questions. Question one, do you agree that the cross was God's ultimate display of God's unconditional love? Do you agree? Yes, amen. The second question is, do you agree that untold millions are still waiting to hear an expression of that love. Yes. yes. Amen. I pray that what Andrew and Selena shared today will not only inspire you, but ignite a fire in you. Not just, just pushing, pushing that button, that every time you hear a plane overhead, you ask yourself, is that reboot? Are those missionaries? Should I be on it? Should I be sowing into it? Or to be a part of everything that God is doing in and through the people he sends for his kingdom, for his glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you for that, Louise. So we're going to worship now, guys. And while we do that, we are going to take an offering. Um, if you don't have cash, if you want to give by bank transfer, we do have bank details that we, we will share on the screen at the very end. But right now, we just want to invite you guys to worship with us. Amen. <laughs> 